Hi, uh, my name's Henry and I'm building a kayak. I had the idea many, many years ago, but never got round to it. I've always wanted a surf kayak, they're quite expensive. Um, in the end, I brought myself around to buy one last year. Uh, really loved it, got into it. Um, I've been surfing in riverboats for practically all my life, but surf boat is just something different. Problem is, the one I bought doesn't really fit me very well. It's causing quite a lot of stretching, so as I think about, could I modify it? Um, I damaged it the first couple of times I used it, so it'd already been fixed. Um, probably wouldn't get much money for it, maybe half of what I paid. So, um, I can't really afford to buy a new one. Uh, modifying it's going to look terrible, I think. Um, I've got no experience using composites really. So, decided to design my own and in that process discovered that I could create a boat that not only I fit in nicely but has some features that I think I would really like in a surf kayak. So, um, this is from start to finish. I'm not going to go into a lot of details on the design side of it, um, but hopefully uh, it'll be interesting. I'm trying something new. Okay, so um, the very first thing I really had to do was decide how I was going to build this thing. As I said, it's all about making it affordable. And it clearly wasn't going to be affordable to make it out of uh, fiberglass using the, uh, the female mould. So I decided to make an internal mould. Um, did think about strip planking it for a while but the cost of decent wood for strip planking is astronomical. Um, it was going to cost me um, significantly more. Still cheaper than um, buying a brand new kayak off the shelf but I, I needed to cut the costs a lot more so I've decided uh, to try a foam core construction. I've seen this on various YouTube videos being used for canoes, um, obviously bigger boats. Uh, but ultimately it means that I've got a reasonably flexible and formable core which I can wrap in fiberglass um, and the first thing I need to do is sort out the design so that's where I turn to CAD. I've used CAD before but uh, a long time ago for a university project and it was a very simple part that I had to design um, so that I could do some analysis on it. Um, I didn't want to buy CAD. I came across this online um, just doing a little bit of searching. It's called On Shape, and I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, so it's cad.onshape.com. Uh, it's free uh, as long as you're happy to share your um, designs publicly. I think it's got quite a hefty fee otherwise, but that's not a problem for me. Um, I've gone through, you can see like various different um, iterations and practices. These shapes at the bottom are shapes I created using their tutorials. And I really learned for the first time how to do some uh, basic and slightly more advanced um, CAD designing. And it led me to come up with this surf kayak. So I'm going to go into the full detail about how I did it but I've come up with this design um, it's got all the elements I want I was able to shape the, the hull the way I wanted it I was able to put the volume for my knees and my big old feet in there um, and yeah it's pretty straightforward but basically what I was able to do with this was create all of the cross sections I need to create an internal mold so um, they're not all on there but just to give you an idea if I switch all of these on and get rid of the solid parts then you can see um, some of there you go you can see the stations that I um, used um, and that's what you'll see next these have all been printed and 
stuck onto plywood and cut out. Um, I had to make sure that there was a strong back going all the way through the center of it. So I cut those holes out and they just slid onto the strong back and you'll see how this looks. Okay, so welcome to my working space. Uh, not only is money a bit tight, but so is space. Um, this is my garage. You can see that I'm a bit of a uh, boater. I've got lots of boats. This one is the surf kayak I bought. Uh, it has been a lot of fun. It just causes me a bit of pain in the hamstrings. So um, my design doesn't quite copy this one. Um, I'm going for a slightly shorter design, slightly more uh, manoeuvrable. Um, but yeah, look at the space I've got, it's ridiculous. I could probably tidy up a bit and make it a bit better, but quite frankly, there's not a lot more I can do to create any space. This is the floor space I've got. And here it is, the design. I've printed each of those stations, glued it on, and cut it out of one big bit of ply. These are really stiff. I could probably have gone um, maybe for 9mm, this is 12mm. 9mm um, I think would have been adequately stiff for, for what I need, but it is what it is. Next time, if there is a next time, will be um, that'll be a learning point. Uh, I'm going to shape some foam to go inside the bow here. Um, just some mini cell foam uh, so that the tips of the um, core which come to here are going to have something to stick to. You can see I've just I've used this uh, bit of Unistruct which I had lying around from days gone by when I was on the tools um, as my st strong back so all of these holes that I put in the stations were 21 by 41 and um, with a little extra so they had a bit of wiggle room. I screwed these blocks which are spacers um, onto each face you can see there's just a single little screw there and then afterwards um, what I've been doing this morning is getting all of this fared up so I used this string to help me I actually fared the hull because I wanted the hull to be really really fair the top probably could get away with a few mistakes but the hull needs to be really really good so I did this upside down and I did it outside I've got a little space there that I could put it on and um, I was able to basically twist all of these get them lined up I used a little bit of CA glue to um, really tighten the bond between this and this once it was fared and um, each of these are screwed to the unistrut so in some places I needed to use some wedges just to create enough of a twist to get everything fair but I'm happy now that everything is fair. So this is just sitting here for now. I can transfer it outside for sunny days to work out there. Plenty more space. Um, so I need to pop out to the shops now. I'm gonna pop out to the shops and get some glue from good old Trago Mills. And when I've done that, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna use um, some card templates from my daughter's old school exercise books. I'm just going to use a lot of these to lay on here, trace where I want the lines and then I'm going to translate that to my uh, PVC foam core which I've got waiting up here at the moment. Okay so I've got this set up. I'm using it inside for now for to do the coring because I might need to get a hot gun on it, I've got power in here, um, and I might just need that to help to form the, co the core uh, to take up some of the slightly tighter curves. So the core's quite stiff, and um, it will probably go. I just don't want to break it, so I'm just going to warm it up. It's a cool day, um, and I've already come across an issue. The issue being is that the foam that I bought comes in these square sheets. Um, I'm in about just over a metre square. So I'm not going to be able to put a continuous piece of foam from the front all the way to the back. Um, which I don't think would be a 
difficult on the hull because the hull is fairly flat um, it's certainly dead flat in the center so I can maybe scarf a joint between two pieces of ply uh, foam and that will be adequate obviously the strength will come from the laminate um, but on here I've got a, f a fairly gentle curve here but obviously it's a continuous curve um, a concave curve here and then a convex curve over the knees and then there's another concave curve uh, just behind me for um, the seating position followed by quite a sharp convex curve at the tail so the question is where do I put a join am I going to need multiple joins um, now I, I did think because this is quite narrow I, I don't want to waste any board and this could be a bit tricky but if I use this diagonally so that I put this point at the bow and then cut the shape along it then I've got this shape here which tapers in to this point and then if I scarf that that would allow the scarf joint to take up the curve along the length I think I'm going to try that it will mean that um, actually this portion here is fairly flat so the joint will become will come on a fairly flat section of the boat um, and the curves most of the curves will be uh, in front of the, the joint or behind the joint um, but it does just mean that I'm going to end up with two triangular panels which I just hope I'm going to be able to use uh, because I've only got three sheets of this stuff and it's quite expensive um, a lot cheaper than cedar strip but about twice the price of, price of marine ply which was my original um, idea for core material so I'm going to give this a go I'm going to work out where it needs to be, I'm going to trace it and cut it out. Okay, um, <clears throat> just disappeared off a little bit to uh, shape this. This is the, uh, the bow. Um, I've got a drawing for it. I did cut out uh, a template which I thought about putting here, which I could wrap the foam around. But um, to be honest, this, I've just made a, a top half. I'm going to make a bottom half as well when I do the hull, and I'll be able to stick the foam straight onto that. Um, and that will become incorporated when I laminate over the outside and when I laminate the inside I'll be able to put a fillet on there and I think it's going to make joining the bow and if I do the same on the stern it's going to make joining those easier um, so I've just been shaping this from a bit of leftover mini cell from the uh, old pair of foot blocks and a surf form and it's actually worked quite well Okay, so all I've done so far is um, stitched some card together, uh, just with a bit of masking tape, and I'm going to trace uh, the first panel. So the way I've designed this is that I've got a flat top to each uh, section, which means there's going to be a flat panel that curves all the way along, uh, and then essentially a side panel here is a, probably a tiny bit of uh, rotation of that side panel as it gets a bit steeper and then a um, tiny bit shallow towards the end but it's, it's less steep at the front and it's steeper at the back uh, and then there's a radius between that so that radius is going to be quite tricky to do I'm not worried about that immediately the first thing we're going to do is get this panel shaped um, I'm I want to get this panel 
uh, on. After that, I'm going to do the um, I'm going to do the edge here and um, the bottom edge of the deck, which is going to join onto the hull, um, and that will be um, a, a datum to work off up from. Um, but then later, when I flip the thing over, it's also going to be uh, the point at which I measure the, or I, I place the first piece of the hull so that I know that they're going to mate correctly when I take the two halves off and put them back together again. Um, so I'm going to do the top panel first and then this, and then I'm going to join between this and I'm going to attempt to fill the space between here and moving up. There's a little slant and there's a panel and then there's this radius which I'm probably going to make out of uh, thin strips of foam. At least that's the initial plan. I might have enough of the foam to experiment to see how much I can shape it because if I can shape it around this radius I'll try it but I don't think it's going to go. It's 10 mil foam, um, it's quite rigid, I've already snapped a small piece, I don't want to snap a big piece because I'm not going to have enough to go around. So I, my gut feeling is that I'm going to be stripping the foam and then um, gluing those strips together, maybe having to make cut some infills in places, uh, and then afterwards just sanding it lightly to get the rounded shape, um, or worst case scenario, I might have to use a little bit of filler uh, to fill the lows and get a round radius on there, but I think um, that's going to be okay. Anyway, so this is what I'm doing, here's the card for the panels, next thing I'm going to draw around that and cut it out. Okay, so um, I've marked it. I put some masking tape with the inside edge matching the marks, and I've cut around the tape. I think the nose I was able to do a little bit more accurately, but I've, it's basically oversized at the moment. So I'm just going to see where I need to trim it, make it as accurate as possible before, um, and checking it's symmetric as well before applying it to the core and cutting out what I need. Okay, so I've got the piece cut. Um, you can see how stiff the board is on its own, but it's flexible enough to push down into those. I feel that's going in quite easily. I'm not too worried about that concave. Um, but I do feel like this is. I'm a bit scared pushing this down, but it's going to snap over here. So what I plan to do is just warm this up, not to melting temperature, just to make it a little bit more pliable and see if that works. Okay, uh, we've got a marginally better camera angle now. Stay in that position. Okay. Right, so 
Uh, I've made up some little clamps um, which I can use with these spring clamps to hold the foam on the form and yeah using a little bit of heat gave me enough pliability to get it round here without snapping um, and it's kept quite a nice smooth curve as well so that, comp that uh, curve on the front is uh, done little bit of experimentation and uh, I mean this is as far as I've taken it but that is as tight a radius as I'm going to need anywhere on the boat and it doesn't appear to have affected the integrity of the foam um, the surface still looks the same all the way around the outside edge and the inside edge um, it doesn't feel brittle I've given it a wiggle it's still got some flexibility in it as much as the rest of the board so I'm happy that I can um, bend the foam as much as I need to uh, whether I use it to bend around the radius or not I still not decided because it's a compound curve um, the radius goes all the way from here it's going to obviously follow the same edge as this curve and it's coming around here so I think even with that kind of pliability it's still in two dimensions um, trying to create a compound curve in there I think you'd be really struggle to stretch it in two axes to get that um, compound curve in uh, so I think you probably can get compound curves out of it. If I had a bit more spare board I might try it, but I don't, so I'm not going to. I think I'm going to stick with strips, um, but maybe I can afford to make the strips a bit wider and use a little bit of warmth to get them to wrap a little bit, which means I'm removing less material and I maintain the thickness of the core throughout the radius, which I would prefer. Anyway, I'll try that. Next thing I'm going to be doing is uh, fitting the uh, edge of the deck to this point I've just marked I've got little vertical sections on my mould uh, which I've just marked the uh, halfway halfway up them and uh, I know that I, I can use um, a 20mm thick strip to cover the side uh, and if I do the same on the bottom that will cover the hull and then actually I get I can remove quite a lot of this material to make my edge um, slightly rounded and uh, a bit grippier um, so I've got a bit of a rail when I'm surfing so a lot of this will be removed but it's um, quite crucial quite a critical part for joining the deck and the hull. Okay, so what I've done here is I've used a little bit of Gorilla Glue to join the PVC foam um, and I've just made a simple clamp out of two flat bits of wood wrapped in plastic so they don't stick to it um, and then just taped it around with electrical tape keep a bit of pressure on. Uh, I've been putting dabs of hot glue between this um, foam piece, this edge and the wood, so these are basically tacked on, it's not super strong so when it comes to demoulding it's just going to be a case of popping them off, uh, but uh, I did put some 
hot glue at the front there, I'm going to change that for the um, Gorilla glue when it comes time because the Gorilla glue expands a little bit and there's a bit of space between the foam and stuff. It's all going to be encapsulated so that there should be zero water getting in there um, in the end, but I'd like, I don't really want big air spaces either. Uh, try and improve the strength as much as possible by filling in every gap with either construction foam or some ex kind of expanding adhesive. Um, and I'm going to carry on all the way down the back of the boat. You won't see that, so I'm going to stop recording now, but this is going to carry on all the way to the back. Um, and, oh, I don't know. I don't know if there's time today. I might, put, I might start putting a couple of pieces on here as well. I expect there'll be another um, piece here, a piece here, and then make a start on the radius. But the radius, I'm pretty sure, is not going to happen today. Um, that's going to be next week. So... Uh, but yeah, it's starting to take shape, it's starting to look a little bit like a kayak. Okay, so it's the end of the, um, really the second full day I've been working on this. The first full day was putting that um, mould together. And today, uh, like I said, I set up the mould properly so that it was fared and started uh, shaping things. I'm getting used to the... PVC foam cutting it is so easy to cut just with the standing knife and if you drag it through carefully you can get some pretty quality lines so um, not a lot further on from when I last filmed but basically so I've got that top piece on I'm just going to leave those clamps on um, until I come back to it next the hot glue is holding it but there's a chance it might all pop off. I don't think it matters if it does, but I'd like it to stay together. Um, I got this uh, rail. This is the deck side rail. I've got that all the way around to the back. I decided not to do foam in the back because it's not um, as inaccessible as the front will be. So I'm just going to use that piece that, which I had already cut out from the drawings. Um, you can see how well that actually has bended quite a tight radius around there. Um, but I'm probably going to cut it and join it with the rail on the other side, which I'll do next week. I'm hoping for some nice weather so I can do more of this outside. Um, and yeah, I'm starting to build up. So uh, I've got this piece on here which comes up from the rail. Uh, that piece is cut ready to go but I need to wait until this is fully cured. It could probably come off now. There's a joint down here that I made earlier that's already cured but I haven't got time to deal with it now anyway so I'll take that off next time. Um, clean that up. This will go in here and then it will be a case of cutting a, a side panel here and worrying about this radius um, as well as the, the stern deck piece which is going to go over there and of course the other side which I haven't started yet but I'm pretty confident I can get all that done in one day so uh, so this is it for now I'm just going to tidy up and then I will probably post something in a week hopefully <laughs>